Hi, I'm Johnny from ultimatepapermache.com and this week I made myself a vampire skull Halloween bucket. There are lights. Let me show you what it looks like when it's a little bit darker. The, the really fun part of this project actually is the way it was made. It's a way to reproduce a design when <laughs> you need a whole bunch of them and you can get a lot more detail than this. I actually made my gorilla mask this way. This, this is what he looks like and it was made basically the same way but once I got done with the plaster cloth then I uh, I finished it with some paper mache and some I think it was air dry clay. So you don't have to just leave the plaster cloth like this. The reason I use plaster cloth instead of paper mache for these you could make them out of paper mache if you want to but I thought that they would rattle like old bones. <laughs> it doesn't rattle quite as much as I had hoped it would, but I still think it's pretty cool. <laughs> Let me show you how I made it. I found a plastic tub down in the basement that had a handle on it, and I messed around with some math <laughs> just to try to decide how wide to make the skulls. And it turned out that six of them would fit if they were just a little bit smaller than four and a quarter inches wide. Of course, your tub is gonna be a different size than mine, so you'll have to do a little bit of math yourself or just guess. I used a felt tip marker to give me some guidelines after I measured them out and just put those right on the tub. I'm gonna be painting it black later, so that's, that's just fine. I'm actually using my resin skull as a model, but I'm not going to be making the whole skull. I just wanted to use the top half of it. My, <laughs> my theory is that my vampire skulls have been in the ground for so long that the lower jaws got lost. I, I, okay, I was, I was really just being lazy. <laughs> and I actually didn't intend to make them vampire skulls either. It's just that when I was sculpting with the clay, one of the canine teeth got really pointy and I decided I was making vampires. Now I'm using WED clay and I'm actually using this clay for the second time. I took it off of a Jaguar model that I was making for a mask. You can use it over and over again, but you can't fire it. It's just a modeling clay and I just happen to really like using it. It's wet uh, like, like pottery clay. So it goes on really fast and you can move it around really easily. But you can use any kind of modeling clay you want to for this process. If you don't get any plaster on it, you can usually just go ahead and put it back in a plastic bag and use it again for something else. I'm putting my clay model right on top of the bucket because I want the back of it to be curved the same way that the bucket is curved. Uh, I didn't think it would fit on very well if they were flat, but I don't think in the end, I don't think that really mattered all that much. So if you want to make yours on something flat, it, it would, I'm sure it would work just fine and it would be an awful lot easier. I was not trying to sculpt a, a realistic skull. Um, this is this is for Halloween, it's gonna be dark. I just really didn't think it would matter that much. And so I wasn't trying real hard to get it right. As long as you get the the eye sockets, you got a, an empty spot for the nose, people are gonna know that you're trying to, to get a skull. It doesn't have to be perfect. Of course, you can make yours perfect if you want to. I just. I was kind of in a hurry and I didn't try too hard. If you don't have a resin skull just sitting around the house, look up skull images online. There's thousands of them. Or use a different kind of skull. Neanderthals would be really cool. Um, a dragon skull or, or a whole bunch of them would be really nice. Um, you know, whatever you want to do, be creative. It's, it, just have fun. When I thought my skull shape was close enough, I put a plastic garbage bag down over the table. Plaster cloth can get really messy and that's what we're going to be doing next. Then I brushed my clay with water. I wanted to make it nice and wet and then I got out my plastic wrap and I covered the clay but I had to use three strips. It, I tried just using one big piece and it just bunched up really bad inside the eye sockets. It didn't work. So I used a thinner strip over that area and then wider ones at the top and bottom. You can actually put more water over the plastic if you need to put a second strip of plastic down uh, to make the two pieces of plastic stick together. I don't know why plastic likes to stick to water, but it does. Then, um, now for the messy part, but this is actually kind of fun. I, I cut a roll of plaster cloth into strips. They're about an inch or an inch and a half wide. Um, the easy way to do that is actually just to use a box cutter and cut through the entire roll but I didn't uh, this time I just went ahead and, and used some scissors but I did it outside because plaster dust is going to go all over the place when you cut it so I just take it out into the garage and do that and then bring it back in the house. 
You do want to make sure that your plaster cloth strips are as far away from the water as you can get them. And don't drip water onto them from your wet hands. You have to be really careful not to get water on the plaster cloth until you're actually ready to use it because as soon as it gets wet, it's going to start getting hard. Now, you can see that the only detail on these half skulls is in the teeth area. So I started at the top and I worked down. The, the plaster cloth at the top of the skull is actually already starting to harden before I got to the teeth. So you want to and do the teeth part last uh, so that you'll have plenty of time to press the cloth in between the teeth to get a decent casting of them. I took quite a bit of time on the first one and after that I, I didn't. <laughs> but um, they all seem to have come out okay. Enough so that they are recognizably teeth anyway because they're stuck on a skull. <laughs> it's sort of obvious what they are. When you're happy with the way your skull looks and go ahead and rinse your hands in the bowl of water and then pour that water outside on the ground. Do not let any plaster or any water with plaster in it anywhere near your sink unless you really like your plumber because it does harden underwater. Now after that you can go ahead and take your dogs for a walk, watch a couple of YouTube videos, do whatever you want to for uh, at least 10-15 minutes. That's really usually all it takes, but you don't want to try to take the plaster cloth off until it's hard enough or it's going to it's going to bend and get out of shape. But when it is hard enough, you can very carefully pull it off of the clay. If you don't have any really deep undercuts, it should come off fairly easy. The first one I, I pulled off actually had a hole in one of the eyes. You can see that here. I, I just didn't put the plaster cloth over it. Sometimes it's a little bit hard, especially when you have a dip like in the eye sockets because the the plaster and water kind of pools in there and you can't see if you've got an empty space under it. But it didn't really matter because I just used an extra piece of wet plaster cloth to fill it in when I was working on the second one. So it wasn't hard to fix it. And obviously you just keep doing this <laughs> until you have enough skulls to go all the way around your bucket. Plaster cloth hardens pretty fast so it really didn't take all that long. So this is the very last one and as soon as this one is hard enough to get off of there, I'm going to take this water out to the garden and get rid of it. Then I'm going to take this and all of the other five of them outside. I'm going to clean up the edges um, while standing over a garbage can. And I'm going to cut holes with this drill in each one of those eyeballs. Then I'm going to take this outside. Uh, as soon as I get it all cleaned up and, and dried off, I'm going to spray it with some black spray paint. Bucket is black now. It looks a lot better now, don't you think? And I also, I, I did put the holes in his eyes and I also put one right here so that I can actually attach it. We also need some holes in the, the bucket right around the rim so that we can hang the skulls. And I know um, about how far apart each skull, skull has to be because I did the math before and I marked my string. I got my fairy lights out and it's quite long. So I want the lights to be pretty much even with the eyeballs. Make a hole right there. I think if I made another vampire skull bucket, I would go ahead and hide the switch under one of the skulls <laughs> instead of doing it like this. So this is kind of crazy found some black tape. So I want the, the um, switch to point upwards. If you make one of these or, or anything for Halloween, <laughs> please come back to the Daily Sculptures page on my website and show it off. You can find that page. There's a link to it right at the top of the site. And we really want to see what you make for this Halloween. So come on back and visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.